Hi there guys, what's up? Welcome to a brand new anime figure slash toy photography tutorial on the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the absolute easiest way to remove uh, figure stands or wires from your, uh, your figures or toys uh, in Photoshop. Now I'm thinking of doing a few more tutorials like this covering the absolute basics of toy and anime figure photography. So if there's anything that you'd like me to cover, I can't get my words out, let me know in the description below uh, and I'll get around to making them, you know, be it like basic setups, uh, basic uh, settings on your camera, uh, basic editing, you know, let, let me know. I really want to start like a cool little series. So uh, I thought this would be a good way to start. So I recently took a photo of this Ichigo Kurosaki Nendroid and I wanted to put him on this uh, background that like Waco Mundo to get that really cool like anime looking scene and i thought to myself as i was editing like hey i'm removing uh, the stand i do this all the time this would be a really really good place to start uh, especially with things like nendroids uh, or if you're using any toys where you're using wires to create like an action like effect um to make it look more lifelike and bring these figures to life you're going to want to remove those stands so it looks less fake and more real right so i thought hey let's 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 do this so this is something you're going to be doing absolutely all of the time especially when using these nendroids so for the examples i've got today i will be using uh the the nendroids obviously they have got these like thick uh white kind of like well white clear clear stands but uh, uh any kind of wire that you can use to prop up toys or figures like all these uh all these techniques i'm about to show you are going to be exactly exactly the same so uh first of all uh let's uh, set this figure up and uh let's take the shot of ichigo in waco mundo Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the shot that I took there, and I used the exact same process I did when I took my Kurumi Tokusaki Halloween um, shot, where I used my monitor as a background. I also did a video on that recently, which I'll link in the cards and in the description below. So if you want to check out how I made that scene possible, uh, there's that. But for now, we're going to go into Photoshop to remove the wire behind each gun. I'm going to show you three ways of doing this but i'm going to show you the absolute easiest way first it's going to save you so much time so that being said let's jump straight into photoshop So this first method is the absolute easiest, in my personal opinion, in removing the stands. So you need to take two photos, one with the toy and figure in there, and then a separate one of just the background. However, there is a trick to doing this. So the first photo you take, you can use autofocus or manual focus. Make sure the uh, figure is in focus. Obviously, that's the key point here. Take that shot, then what you wanna do is switch your camera over to manual focus if you haven't already. And to do that, just on this, this lens over here you'll see there's an af and an mf obviously autofocus manual focus so flip that down to manual focus remove the figure from the background and then take the same shot without touching the camera so using a tripod for this one is also going to be preferable so you don't get any shake reason i say this is because of this third layer over here where i didn't shoot in manual focus what happens is is that the whole perspective changes now if i remove ichigo uh, look at the moon as an example of this so if i remove ichigo you'll see the moon changes so the background is changed because i didn't keep my focus exactly the same so if we try removing anything in here the whole look at this whole background over here that's going to shift upwards and it's, it's just not going to look right so this bottom layer here we don't need it get rid of it so yeah really important to do that i hope that made sense so take one photo with the figure in there make sure it's all in focus and then don't touch anything at all remove the figure and then take the same shot again with the background there so it's going to match exactly so it's the same amount of bokeh that blur in the background and everything it's gonna make it so much easier right back to photoshop so what we're going to do in order to remove this over here you can do two things really you can use the uh, eraser tool uh, making sure that you're on the first image and you can start uh, erasing like so and obviously we're getting rid 
of that stand. And because we've got that background underneath, you can now see why it's important that we kept everything the same as the background in the shot with the figure in it. So it just removes it seamlessly. Now, the other way of doing this is using a mask, which is a lot less destructive. So what we're gonna do is click this little button down here. It adds a mask. Make sure you're on the layer with the figure. Okay, so we're gonna use a brush now. So let's bring the brush size up a bit. Keep the hardness down, probably bring it up a little bit more. That's right, so we've got a white and black over here. If we use a black brush, it's going to erase. And if we use the white brush, it's gonna paint everything back on. So remember black removes and white brings stuff back, if that makes sense. So using the black brush over here, we we'll probably wanna zoom in as well. Zoom in down here and then, whoa. Cause our brush isn't as hard, it makes it a lot easier when we get closer to the figure, making sure that we don't erase him. However, if we accidentally whoop, we do that, not a problem. Go back to your white, paint him back in. So the key here is zooming in and zooming in, adjusting your brush size as well, so you can get nice and close, close as you can to the figure without erasing the figure but like i said if you do erase the figure white brush and uh you're back in the game <laughs> here we go just gonna go around each go here remove as much as that white as we can obviously there looks like there's a little bit of a cast bring that up a little bit more just a boop, 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 boop. So yeah, get in as close as you can, guys. There we go. Perfect, and if we zoom out, <laughs> it took me a while doing that. Oh God, I like. Yeah, so if we zoom out like so, there, there we go. The, the, the stand is completely removed. Right, so for me, that was the easiest way on how to remove a stand. But I'm gonna show you two other methods because there, there's there's plenty of times where you'll take a picture and then you'll get into the editing phase and you're like, oh man, I did not take a, the second picture without the figure. It happens, it happens. We do it all the time. It's not a problem. So I'm gonna show you two other methods in case you fall into that position as well. So obviously the first method, if you can do that, because for me, it's the absolute easiest. Uh, if not, I'm gonna show you uh, two other ways of, of removing the stands off of just one image. So I have got Inosuke here from Demon Slayer. Now, as you can see, we not only got the stand, but we've got the base and we've got a little manga that I placed him on as well. So we're gonna need to remove this. And the way we're gonna do that is by using a clone stamping tool. So in Photoshop, you'll see just underneath the brush here, there's this little stamp here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click that. Uh, same again, probably adjust the brush size little bit seems about right to me let's do that hardness again the less hard the better i guess is that what she said i don't know right so zoom in what you want to do here is hit shift if you're on pc or option if you're on a mac and you see how the cursor's changed so it was a circle before now we've got like a target click anywhere in the background and what's going to happen is where I've clicked over here, our brush is now going to clone that. So if we start going over this, you can see we've got almost two cursors on the screen now. One is removing the other like crosshair is basically kind of showing us where where we're copying from. Obviously, we want to get in a little closer when we're going around an Osuke here, but this is just a quick example. Obviously, when you're doing this yourself, you take as long as you need to take, but for the, uh, the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to speed through it. So there we go. There's the stand removed there. Now we need to get rid of this, uh, the book and the other stand. So same again, just hold option or uh, shift if you're on a PC, click, and then we're going to start painting away. Look at that. Photoshop magic at its absolute best here. Look at this. It never even existed. Absolute magic. Scenes. <laughs> you love to see it. Now option clicks. Make sure you're getting that, that black there. There we go. Painting some of this foliage probably. 
There we go. Look at that. Black space. No more. And if we zoom out. Bob's your uncle. Obviously, we've got this little bit of a stand over here. Not a problem. Probably reduce the brush for this one. Click. Probably get some of that white, actually. That was quite nice. There we go. Absolute magic. Nice and easy. Baby steps, people. Baby steps. There we go. Like I say, I'm, I am rushing this for the sake of the tutorial. So you can take more time, zoom in, zoom out and whatnot. But as you can see, clone stamping is fantastic. Look at that. Beast. You'd never know. <laughs> Photoshop magic. Okay, so the final method I'm going to show you is probably my least favorite out of the three, but still an effective one. So this one depends on the type of background that you've got. If you've got one that's quite simple, this one's going to work a lot better. If you've got a background where a lot's going on, you're going to struggle a little bit. However, I think with this photo, we'll get a decent result off of this one. Back into Photoshop, we're going to use Inosuke again. Right, so what we want to do is we want to use the lasso tool here. So click that. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically just draw around the stand. Obviously, it's quite close to a Nosuke, so we're probably just going to have to touch it up with the clone stamping here. But like to remove this big, big block of stuff we don't want going on over here, uh, I think we'll be fine. So let's draw probably as close to him as we can. There we go. Basically, you click, draw, and then when you've met up here, just release and it's going to create these little like white ants and this little trail so basically everything we're doing in terms of the content aware uh, it's only going to affect the area that is within these little white walking ants so once that is selected what we're going to do is we're going to hit edit and then we're going to go down to content aware fill click that and Photoshop's going to bring up this little menu over here. So all this green stuff, what is it? The green stuff is basically what Photoshop is going to draw from uh, and in terms of filling in what we've selected. As you can see, we've got some green on Inosuke uh, and we don't really want to duplicate any of Inosuke's body parts over here. We basically want to try and just get this darker, like blurry, meshy part of the forest. So just paint over what we don't want. So... Just paint around in Oscape. We don't want any of him. <laughs> there we go. Get off the sword as well. We'll probably get rid of uh, the tree over here as well because it's just the mesh. Is it mesh or marsh at the bottom that we want? We don't want any of those harsh blue lights that's coming through the trees. So that looks pretty good right so once that's done hit ok or apply and boom there we go obviously you can see there's some harsh lines here so we like i said we can go back in with the clone stamp and just get rid of that harsh line that's around here just around his foot as well little touch-ups little touch-ups uh, if we zoom out that's a lot better boom and there we go that was how i remove nendroid stands and wires from toy photography or anime figures that i'm shooting i really really hope this tutorial helped you out uh, and like i said i want to start doing this anime figure toy photography basic series so if there's anything that you'd like me to cover let me know in the comment section below i thought i'd start with how to remove stands as it's something that you'll probably do a, a very vast majority of the time if you're not hiding them or obviously if you're shooting scales it doesn't really matter but like for a lot of like the action-esque scenes you're going to be using this so i thought it'd be a really really good start but again like i said i really hope this did help you out and that is it for today's video so as always don't forget to smash the like button hit the subscribe button as well to be notified when future videos go live on the channel and have a fantastic rest of the day can't wait to see what photos you guys come up with so till next time see you later bye bye